today I'm going to step you through the setup as we have it currently for ComCare, uh, just the first part of the implementation. So before we get into ComCare itself, let's just have a look at what we've got set up. So the flow of things as it starts is with your community health worker or your CCG who goes and does a door-to-door -door visit. And during a door-to-door -door visit, they'll normally start by registering the family with the family profile form. And then after that, on any of the members that are present, they can perform a screening, uh, making use of the screening form. Depending on the outcome of the screening form, if there is high blood pressure or blood sugar, they can then refer them to a clinic. From the clinic referral, what will happen is once, uh, once a week or maybe every two weeks, a supervisor will go to the clinic and they also have a ComCare app on their own form, uh, on their own phone. And then they will go and check the list of arrivals at the clinic to see whether that patient was referred actually arrived over there. They will fill out the patient arrival update or the no-show form. And uh, the first time they will follow up with a phone call. If it happens a second time, they still haven't arrived a week later, they'll follow up again with a phone call. And if they still don't arrive after that, uh, then they will assign that person back to the CHW or the CCG for a home follow-up because they haven't been able to contact them on telephone. In ComCare, the CHW or CCG will then receive a notification over there. They will see on their list of no-show visits that there is someone that they need to go and visit who hasn't arrived at the clinic. And they will go and find them and fill out a no-show visit form about the reasons why they didn't arrive. What can possibly happen then is if the person is bedridden or there's some other reason why they can't get to the clinic, they have the option of requesting a team visit. And if that is the case, then the person will show up on the list on, at the moment it's in the supervisor's app, but we can put that in the CCG's app as well. Uh, it'll show up that there are people who are requiring a team visit. And when they go and perform that visit, there will be a team visit form that is filled out. So that's the basic flow of our um, process. Let's go and have a look at what that looks like in the apps itself. So here we are with the Healthrise CHW app and we're logging in as CHW number one with their password. This is what they'll do at the start of the day. So once they're logged in, normally what you'll do is you start off by syncing with the server and make sure that all of the cases are updated on your device and then they will say start. So we have some options over here. We're going to do a screening because we're busy with the home to home visit. It shows you a list of families over here you can, that have already been registered. You can go and search for families if needed, but we know we're going to, we've just arrived at a new family that we haven't been to before, so we're going to say we want to add a new family. So now it opens up the family profile form and we can start filling this out as the CCG. So today we're busy with the door to door, not with the campaign. There's certain questions that we will ask or won't ask, depending on which is happening. Uh, you can say the GPS position of the dwelling, because we're busy with the door-to-door -door over here. So if you click record location, it'll save the GPS point. I'm sitting inside at the moment, so I don't have GPS, so I'm going to skip that one. You'll see it warns the CCG if they don't actually fill it in to make sure it was that a mistake. Please try and capture the GPS position. And it asks what's the family's surname. So I'm going to say this family is the Anderson family. And we go on. It says what is the address of their house. So we have a GPS location, but maybe there's some other way to describe. Um, so I'm going to say the 33 um, Apple Close or Apple Road. Then it says, how many family members reside here? I'm going to say there are three family members in the house. Then it says, we're going to add for the first family member, family member number one. So it says, what is the person's first name? So we're going to say this is Andy Anderson. And uh, is his surname Anderson? There may be um, other people living in the same house, but he is in this case. Uh, Andy is male. His date of birth, uh, it's a long time ago, he's not sure. Uh, oh, sorry, he doesn't know what his birthday is. We say it's um, March the 1st, and we say that he was born in, say, 1975. Uh, and it gives the information just to check and make sure that that's correct. 
Then we say what is, is his highest level education. We say he's got been to Technicon. He is currently employed. Now we're going on to the next family member. So we're on family member number two. First name, we're going to put in his wife, Betsy. And her surname is also Anderson. She's female. And uh, we can just say over here, Betsy is out at the moment. She's not there. And her husband can't remember her birthday. He's going to be in trouble later. Um, but we say that her age is, uh, say, 37 years old. So then it displays those things. We say, yes, that's as we know it. Um, she has been to grade 12. She is currently at home. And she is not currently pregnant. You'll see this is only asked of the females. We went to ask that question for Andy. And is she currently breastfeeding? And she's not breastfeeding at the moment. Now we go on to the next family member, number three. This is their son, Charles. And we say uh, he's also Anderson. Charles is male. His date of birth, uh, we'll say in this case, his father remembers the date of birth. And we say that he was born uh, in May the 2nd. And he was only born now recently. So we're going to say that he was born in 2015. So he's about a year and a half. So that is the details, and we say that's all right. Then we say, because he's a child, we get some extra questions. So he says, how was he born or delivered? It was a natural birth. Are his immunizations up to date? And they are. And then ask just about the family's employment income. Um, is there anyone who qualifies for a grant? And now the CCG is finished with that form. So now they've captured the information for that family. They can now go and have a look at doing an actual screening for that person. So we're going to go back to the menu. And now we're going to go and do a screening. And now you will see that the Anderson family with three family members is on the list. So we can select the Anderson family. It says these are the three members. Those are what their ages are. We said Charles is about one and a half. And um, they said, do you want to add a new person to this family? Maybe you go back to visit later and there's another family member. Or do we want to screen one of these? And we say Andy's here. We're we with him at the moment. So let's do a screening on Andy. And they say, just check, is this the Andy that you're looking for? And we said, yeah, that is him. And now we can begin to conduct the screening. Okay, so let's conduct the screening on Andy. We select conduct a screening. Checks with us, are we busy with a door-to-door -door campaign? We're busy with a door-to-door. -door. And it says, you are now screening Andy. Just to check, we select the right one. We say to Andy, do you have a cell phone number? He says, yes, he does. And we enter that. If you accidentally type in too many digits, we'll get a warning to say uh, that one doesn't look quite right. Please go back and check it again. Then it says, do we want to scan the ID number or the barcode or do we want to fill it in ourselves? So for now, we're just going to fill it in. And we're going to say, I can't remember what year he was born in. I think it was in 75. And he was 2nd of March. And that was his ID number. There are also some checks that are done on that. Um, has he been told before that he has high blood pressure? I'm going to say yes, and he has been told he's had blood pressure, but he's not currently on treatment. So we get prompted now to measure his blood pressure, and we see Andy's, Andy's blood pressure is actually a bit high at the moment, and he needs uh, probably needs to have that followed up on. So we're going to check his blood pressure. Then we start looking at blood sugar or diabetes. Uh, we say no, he hasn't been told by anyone before that he has um, diabetes. Um, and now we're going to go and check some of his details. So we're going to say enter his waist. So his waist is okay. He's got 87 centimeters. Um, he has no one in the family who has diabetes risk. Um, he hasn't been diagnosed with TB. And so he only has one out of six risk symptoms, so we're not going to do a glucose test on him. Then it says the patient needs to refer to the clinic. 
please select one for the list. So this is because he has high blood pressure. So if there's more than one clinic in the ward, he can, you can select which clinic. In most cases, there will probably be only one or maybe two. So we're gonna say we're gonna refer him to clinic number one. And then it says, please explain to him how and when to get to the clinic. So uh, that Andy knows where he needs to go. So we have finished screening Andy. You'll see in the background over there, it sent up the form and it says form sent to server. If the CCG is connected to the internet, it'll be sent up immediately. Otherwise, later in the day, when they um, connect to the internet again, all of the forms that they've done through the day will be sent up. Let us now go and have a look at the supervisors app because they are going to have to go and do a follow up at the clinic to check that Andy actually arrived. Right, so now we are on the supervisor's phone. We see this is the HealthRise supervisor app and we're asking the supervisor to log in. So they log in at the start of the day and uh, the first thing they do after logging in is to go and sync with the server to make sure that all of the cases on their phone are updated. So they're busy doing a sync with the server and then they start and they say the first thing they want to do is they want to go, they're on their way to visit the clinic, clinic number one, and they want to go and uh, check which patients have actually arrived over there. So they'll get a list over here. So this all says clinic one over here. These are a list of patients that should have arrived at clinic one. We see Andy Anderson, who was referred to clinic one, shows up. Um, it says he, he wasn't that urgent, so we have a couple of weeks to follow up on him if he hasn't arrived yet. Um, if you have a higher blood pressure that's more dangerous, this will show a lower number, so we know it's urgent to follow up on this person. Um, and then it's got the other clinics as well, if the supervisor needs to visit one of the other clinics. But they are now at clinic number one, and they will check on the arrivals list over there to see has arrived, and they see over there they, um, any of these people who have arrived, they'll click on them and indicate so. But um, after finishing the check of the list, Andy Anderson hasn't showed up, so we're gonna just note that on his case. So they say, this is the Andy who was referred to the clinic on that date. We continue. And then we have a short form, and we say, did Andy Anderson with that ID number arrive at the clinic? No, he didn't. So why didn't he show up? You'll see this is part of the first call. So a telephone call would have been made to him to follow up. And um, this form could be filled in after being at the clinic when they're making the telephone calls. And uh, they'll say that he, Andy forgot, said he forgot to go. So he says he will be able to get there the next week and he has agreed that he will go to the clinic. It was just that he forgot. So do we need to send a team to visit the patient at this point in time? No, we don't need to go and send them. So that gets saved. Now, maybe a week later, um, we go and check up at the clinic again. We do a visit over there and we find out that Andy still hasn't showed up at the clinic. Uh, we're not quite sure why, but we do a second call. So first of all, he didn't arrive at the clinic. Now we're busy with our second call because we already called him once before. Uh, this time, Andy says uh, he had transport issues this time. He wasn't able to get there. He will be able to go in the coming week. And uh, he has, he agrees, yes, he will be going. So we don't need to send a team to go and visit him. So um, he has now gone a second time. Um, or said he would go a second time. Our supervisor goes to the clinic again the week afterwards and finds out um, Andy still hasn't arrived. He's got high blood pressure and it's been explained to him, but he hasn't arrived at the clinic, so he hasn't arrived. So we've already called him twice, so we're not going to call him again. So they say, do you want to sign a community health worker to follow up? So we say, yes, please send a community health worker to go and visit Andy to see what is going on. So that has been sent up to the server and now the community health worker, the CCG, will be able to follow up. Now we're back with the community health worker, the CHW, or your CCG. When they uh, start the work the next day, they will sync with the server again and uh, Andy's case will be updated over there because uh, there were some changes. So normally what you'll train the CCGs to do is at the start of their day to first go and have a look, are there any no-shows that they need to go and follow up on? And once they're done with that, then they can go and do door-to-door -door screenings. So they come and click on their list of no-shows to visit and they see there are actually a couple of people that they need to go and visit. 
Uh, if their GPS is turned on, it'll show them how far away the people are. And um, so, and also if there's a GPS captured for the house. You'll remember I didn't capture a GPS position for Andy, so unfortunately they don't know how far he is. But they can click on Andy and they see there's his address, so they know at least where he is. And um, they say, okay, we're going to go and follow up on Andy today to see why he didn't show up. And we're going to fill out the no-show visit form. So, first of all, say, did we locate him? And we say, yes, we actually located Andy today. Uh, what is the reason he did not go to the clinic? So when we go and chat to him, we found out he was actually a little bit afraid of going to nurses and the clinic, and uh, so he didn't feel like going. Um, what is the result? So he actually, over here, we have a couple of different options. Um, so we could say, yeah, he's agreed to go and visit the clinic. We've convinced him it's very important for his blood pressure, and he'll go. But just for the example that we're doing now, I'll show you that uh, maybe Andy is bedridden, his worse condition has worsened or something like that, and he actually requires a home visit. So we're going to flag him over here and say we need to do a home visit to Andy. Right, so now we're on the Supervisors app. Uh, this can be added to the CCG app as well. Um, but we want to check if there are any team visits that need to be done. So uh, first of all, we'll just update our case information, with the, sync it with the server, and here we've got a list of team visits needed. So you'll see there are a couple of people who've been flagged in the past while that need team visits. Again, if there's GPS, we'll be able to know how far they are from where we're standing at the moment. And we see that we now have an Andy Anderson that needs a team visit. So when we go to go and visit him, you'll see here it also provides a cell phone number if you want to give him a call. Um, and also his address over there. So we're going to say we want to go and visit Andy. And we're going to do a team visit. So when we get there, just a couple of questions to get prompt. Was he located? We did manage to find him. He was at home. And um, we just want to know, can we now remove him from this team visit list? Obviously, the team may do some checks and want to do other follow-ups afterwards. But as far as this list on the supervisor's phone is, um, we're done for now. If you need to follow him up again, you can say no, and he will remain on that list. And that form is finished. So that completes the flow of data as we've been looking at it um, through the process with this initial setup.